my first hike, I just wanted to take a walk in the woods like Bill Bryson, and now I'm climbing the 48. And it may go in all kinds of different directions. You know, you don't know. Before the 1800s, the White Mountains were listed as the Savage Mountains, sort of like on a map when they'd say, beyond here, there'd be monsters. He came to me and said, hey, I want to do these 48 peaks. And I said, great. And then, hey, I really want to do Washington this summer. Um, you know, it's the baddest, meanest mountain out there. When a lot of people have said, Washington? Why are you staying with Washington? That's crazy. Um, and it's occurred to some of us too, but you know, maybe this way we learn the hard stuff first. Randy's challenges, everybody knows what Randy's challenges are. He's blind um, and he's climbing a mountain. As a blind person worrying about your footing like every step of the way, you have to be slow. And I can't rush that because being unsafe is worse than being slow. You take the physical effort that it would normally be and triple it. The danger factor is a lot higher. It's mentally exhausting. It's exhilarating, but it's really exhausting. We may or may not summit today. We may or may not summit at all. And this is a long, hard hike. So I wanted to remind everybody to enjoy the hike because this is the fun part. This, the, the journey is the fun part. I have a very rewarding and powerful life. I'm, I'm very fortunate. And I have that because of great community around me. Maybe because of a little bit of strength in myself as well. But I wouldn't have had those first steps if New Hampshire Association for the Blind hadn't helped me reach that if Guiding Eyes for the Blind hadn't given me such a valuable asset as my buddy Quinn here. Okay. Well, that's a little scramble narrow, huh? Yeah. Good job, buddy. Good tree. Good tree warning, buddy. I, I couldn't get up my street. Never mind, up the tallest, uh, tallest mountain in New, New England. I might have missed that yesterday. I think that Randy really sees Quinn as his, his link to freedom and to have to forego his help and that partnership, I think is, um, it's more than a practical issue for him. I really think it's very symbolic. I kind of had to learn on the spot exactly what he needs. And I think it's gonna take definitely some practice, uh, figuring out how much information is too much versus not enough. I think this is an incredible lesson for us. Um, and one where we might think, why did we pick the hardest one first? <laughs> but it just shows us like how difficult this is. So we have some real concerns about tomorrow. I'm concerned about Randy lasting a long time. He's so stubborn, he just will you know, tell you everything's great and he'll just do it. And I'm concerned about Quinn as well. So we have to look at alternatives. We have this tagline that is achieve a vision beyond your sight. But the essence really for me is that we all have the ability to set, to set goals for ourselves, to see where we can be, to believe in your possibility and then find the ways to get there. That's, that's the clarity of vision that I'm seeking.